good morning dear students in continuation with the previous topic let us today study about pollination so in pollination let us see what all are the different subtopics and which parts will be covering today it is first of all we'll see about the definition of pollination then after that we'll be studying about the types of pollination basically there are three types of pollination and then we'll study about outbreeding devices or contrivances of cross pollination these agents of pollination that is both about the biotic and abiotic agents will be taking up in the next class so quickly let us move on to the definition of pollination so this definition of pollination i mean about pollination you have been studying right from your school days so let us look at the definition it goes this way the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of a pistil is called as pollination okay so now why this pollination is required this pollination is very important because it has to bring the male and female gametes for fusion it should bring the male and female gametes nearer because these male and female gametes cannot move on their own because they are non motile non motile means they cannot move on their own they do not have the locomotory structures so the fusion of male and female gametes is very much required to bring about the process of fertilization and to obtain the products like the fruits and the seeds okay so that is um, uh, important uh, process and that is brought by a very important phenomena we call it as pollination okay so now let us move on to the types of pollination based on the source of pollen pollination is of three types so let us see the first type it is the autogamy second is the gynogamy and the third one is the zygogamy under these three let us first study in detail about autogamy so here what happens is let us try to break this word autogamy auto means self gamy refers to marriage okay it refers to the marriage auto means self gamy refers to marriage which means this is a type of pollination where the pollen grains are being transferred from androecium to the gynoecium that is the anther to the stigma of the same flower okay so we call also this autogamy as a self pollination why are we calling it as self pollination because it is taking place within the same flower this is very important okay so autogamy is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the same flower uh, we call this type of pollination as autogamy or self pollination now there are certain conditions so that self pollination has to occur what are those conditions here the conditions are the flower should be bisexual in nature see i am representing the bisexual nature with the help of the symbol so what is this bisexual nature bisexual means the flower should contain both the androecium as well as the gynoecium both male and female reproductive parts should be present within the same flower hence we call such a flower as bisexual and that is very important for self pollination okay next after being a bisexual flower the next condition is the synchrony in pollen release and stigma receptivity now what does this statement means synchrony means together the anthers and the stigma should mature at the same time that's very important that together when they mature at the same time that is the anthers when it releases the pollen grains and the stigma will attain the receptivity receptivity means the stigma is ready to receive the pollen grain so that it will allow the pollen grains to germinate okay so when both these anthers and the stigma matures at the same time we call that term as synchrony so it should mature at the same time just being a bisexual flower is not helping in self pollination along with that it should also help in the synchrony of pollen release and the receptivity of stigma should occur after that the third condition is the stigma and the anther should be very close to each other they should be very closer to each other there shouldn't be much distance why because if there is much distance 
you know that uh, may not allow the pollen grain immediately to land on the stigma of the same flower so if the distance is less between the anther and the stigma as soon as the anther is releasing the pollen grain it quick, quickly lands over the stigmatic part and it is achieving in the self pollination so these three conditions are very important i repeat it one is the bisexual flower another is there should be synchrony in the release of pollen grain and the stigma receptivity and the third one is there should be less distance or the anther and the stigma should be closer to each other in order to achieve the self pollination moving on to the next slide that is regarding this in certain plants like oxalis viola as well as camellina so there are two different types of flowers let us understand those flower structure by this diagram this diagram is the same which is present in your ncert book so you can find here the chasmogamous flowers as well as the clistogamous flowers chasmogamous flowers so these chasmogamous flowers are present usually above the uh, ground that is in the aerial part of the plant and the clistogamous flowers are present below the ground okay so chasmogamous flowers you can find the flowers are open that is they are having the exposed anthers as well as the stigma so when there are exposed anthers and stigma what type of pollination will take place it is the cross pollination because the pollen grains from the different plants may come and land on the exposed stigma okay and that may favor into cross pollination so self pollination chances are very less in chasmogamous flowers now when it comes to this clistogamous flowers these flowers are present within the ground that is below the uh, you know uh, aerial part within the soil near the roots you can find small flowers okay so this clistogamous flowers which are there they are the closed ones so when the flowers are closed definitely there is no chance of entry of some other pollen grains landing onto the stigma of this clistogamous flowers so but what type of pollination is occurring here it is the self pollination it only the self pollination will occur and moreover here what happens the uh, in the clistogamous flower that is also a bisexual flower the anther and the stigma is close to each other there is uh, they are very close to each other the synchrony in the release of pollen grains is maintain that is uh, pollen grains and the stigma are maturing at the same time they are the flowers are closed thus it is achieving what type of pollination it is the self pollination moving back to the previous slide so here what happens in the autogamy type of pollination or the self pollination is uh, there is no variation in the characteristics why because the pollination is occurring within the same flower when it is occurring in the, within the same flower uh, there is no change or mixing up of the genes okay so there is no variation or different type of characters you don't find that is the uh, you know kind of disadvantage what we find somewhere it is also having the advantage because it is maintaining the uniform characteristics but it is not helping in evolution because there is no variation in the characteristics well moving on to the second type of pollination is the gytenogamy when again we try to understand the meaning of this term break this term into two parts one is gyteno gyteno refers to neighbor neighbor means what neighbor means someone who is staying beside you okay so we call it as the gyteno gamy refers to marriage that is let us look at the definition of this gyteno gamy transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of another flower but present on the same plant that is there are two different flowers present and the pollination is occurring within those two different flowers but both those flowers are present on the same plant and we call such type of pollination as gytenogamy okay so here when there are two different flowers take present and the pollination is occurring between them so there is necessity of the pollinating agent pollinating agents are very much required to undergo gytenogamy type of pollination okay otherwise because what happens is the, the distance may be more between these two flowers they cannot undergo uh, the transfer on their own so there is 
that help required by the pollinating agents for the transfer of pollen grains well now when you look at this this is also you can find it is genetically similar whatever the products you obtain out of this jetanogamy type of pollination the products obtained are very similar to the parental types because here also there is no mixing of the genes taking place there is no variation occurring why it is not why there is no variation because though the pollination is occurring between the two different flowers but those both flowers different flowers are present on the same plant so same plant will be having the same genetic characteristics hence the product obtained will be genetically similar okay so you have some examples for this that is the cucurbits cucurbits is the different types of cucumbers watermelons okay so you have these different examples <clears throat> moving on to the next type is the xenogamy the third type third type of pollination is xenogamy xeno again try to break the word and you'll get the meaning of xeno is strange gamy refers to marriage now here what happens is there is transfer of pollen grain from anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower and both these flowers are present on different plants this is very important okay so that's why this you know xeno means strange xenogamy also means allogamy or cross pollination okay this is the true cross pollination here what happens is there is transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of different flowers present on two different plants so when there are two different plants definitely the distance is more so this type of pollination is completely depending dependent on what type of um, the i mean the pollinating agents it is completely dependent on the pollinating agents so here what happens is the product what you obtain is showing different variation in the characteristics as a result whatever the variety of flowers variety of trees variety of species we find among the plants is mainly because of what type of pollination it is because of the cross pollination so let us quickly look into the differences between the autogamy genogamy and xenogamy first let us look at the differences between autogamy and genogamy autogamy it is the true self pollination okay which is taking place within the same flower whereas genogamy is taking place between type of pollination taking place between two different flowers present on the same plant autogamy is not dependent on the pollinating agents whereas genogamy is dependent on the pollinating agents the product what you obtain in this autogamy or the offspring what you obtain obtain they are of the same varieties i mean the same genetic uh, similarity is same and here in the genogamy also uh, there is no uh, you know variation they are genetically the same when we look into the differences between genogamy and xenogamy genogamy is a uh, you know a kind it is very closer to the self pollination because genetically it is giving rise to the same kind of offspring or the same product which are genetically similar whereas xenogamy there you can find the variation but what is the similarity in both genogamy and xenogamy in genogamy you find the pollinating agents are required to carry out the pollination even in xenogamy it is completely dependent on the pollinating agents so the example for xenogamy is papaya onion spinach and there are many more examples now this is you have this diagram the first one is the you know bisexual flower which is having both androecium and gynoecium and then here this second diagram is representing it's a bisexual flower where it is representing the self pollination transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the same flower and this is the cross pollination where there is transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the two different flowers taking place okay so this is the cross pollination 
moving on to the next part a very important part is the outbreeding devices or contrivances for cross pollination so here what happens is this outbreeding devices or contrivances of cross pollination what is what is this see uh, in order to avoid the continuous self pollination the plants have undergone certain modifications or adaptations in their structures so that they can avoid the self pollination and encourage or promote the cross pollination why they are avoiding the self pollination the question arises they are avoiding the self pollination in order to prevent the in breeding depletion in order to prevent the in breeding depletion what is this in breeding depletion see if there is continued continued self pollination what happens is um, the there is you know the original characteristics are suppressed that is further in future due to continuous self pollination the productivity reduces the fertility of that particular species reduces so in order to prevent that you know the plants have adapted themselves or modified their structures so that they can prevent the self pollination and they can go for or encourage or promote the cross pollination and let us now look into this outbreeding device so the first one is the dicliny dicliny is also known as unisexuality unisexuality now this dicliny or unisexuality unisexuality means what unisexuality means the plants have the unisexual flowers the plants have the unisexual flowers uni means single so the plants may be having the different type of flowers like the male flower and the female flower is present separately and these plants may be monoecious or dioecious now monoecious means this monoecious means the male and female flowers that is the seminate flower and the pistillate flower they may be present separately on the same plant dioecious means the seminate and the pistillate flowers are present separately on two different plants that is the male flower is present on one plant and the female flower is present on the other plant so when there are unisexual flowers there is no chance of self pollination so only the cross pollination will take place so look at the nature how it has adapted uh, you know the flowers are has adapted themselves so that they can only go for the cross pollination that is they are unisexual flowers and in unisexual flowers you do not find the self pollination taking place okay now the example for this is again you can take down the example such as castor mulberry papaya certain cucurbits cucumber there is one example the picture so here you can find there is the male flower with the androecium anther and filament and then there is a female flower so when they are two different flowers present definitely there is no self pollination only the cross pollination takes place the second type of pollination is dicogamy uh, sorry not pollination the outbreeding device the second type of outbreeding device is the dicogamy that is uh, dico refers to two different so here what happens is in order to again avoid the self pollination the flowers being bisexual here in dicogamy the flowers are bisexual but the maturity of anther and stigma is at different times both anther and stigma mature at the different time there is no synchrony so hence there is no self pollination let, let us look into the sub types first one is the proto andry look at this term proto proto means the first andry refers to androecium so what happens here is the androecium is maturing first being a bisexual flower the androecium matures first okay so once the pollen grains are released of this particular anther but the stigma of the same flower is not ready to receive these anther so this anther is releasing the pollen grains so those pollen grains will find some other, another flower of the same species and thus it is helping in the achieving cross pollination when you look at these there are examples like salvia cleo clerodendron and sunflower as well as rose okay 
now you have this example for proto andri as well as proto gyne you can look at this the different examples here in this flower you can find that the stig the androsium has already mat matured but the stigma is not yet ready to receive the pollen grains proto gyne here proto gyne means the stigma proto refers to first gyne refers to gynoecium so the stigmas mature earlier first when compared to the androsium so examples are plantago magnolia and mirabilis where the stigmas are the female part is maturing first but the androsium the anthers are not yet ready uh, they have not yet released the pollen grains hence it has to go for the cross pollination being a bisexual flower it cannot undergo the self pollination because the maturity of anther and stigma is completely different so this happens in certain flowers so next one is the self sterility which is also known as self incompatibility let us understand the definition of this self sterility or self incompatibility by looking at these diagrams now here in these diagrams you can see uh, there is stigma okay and this s1 s2 s3 and s4 so s1 and s2 means it is uh, the genes which are represented so basically this self sterility or self incompatibility is a kind of genetic mechanism okay so here you can see in this first diagram let us first understand this diagram and then go for the definition this gynoecium which is there that is the stigma in style it is uh, having the s1 and s2 gene okay now here the pollen grain one pollen grain is having s3 gene and another pollen grain is having s4 gene so the pollen grains with s3 and s4 gene are germinating and here you are having s1 and s3 which means these genes of both pollen grains and this uh, gynoecium is different and hence this pollen grains are germinating now moving on to the second diagram you can find that the pollen grain with the s3 gene is germinating but the pollen grain with the s1 gene is not germinating so the question arises why is it not germinating it is not germinating because the gynoecium is having uh, you know s1 gene here as it is having the same genes the pollen grain and the gynoecium is having the same genes so this gynoecium is not allowing the stigma is not allowing this particular pollen grain with the same gene to germinate it is rejecting it it's not allowing it is allowing only the pollen grain with a different gene different gene pollen grain means what it means that the flower which is from a different plant but of the same species only then it is allowing it to germinate because it is helping in the cross pollination now when you look at the third diagram the definition becomes very clear that this gynoecium with s1 and s2 gene here what happens is it is not allowing the pollen grains when with s1 and s2 gene the pollen grains are also having these genes s1 and s2 and this gynoecium is also having the genes with s1 and s2 which means these pollen grains and the gynoecium they are of the same flower hence it is not allowing the pollen grains coming from the same flower okay it is rejecting cell sterility means what cell sterility is a kind of genetic mechanism where the female part of the flower the gynoecium is not allowing the pollen grains of the same flower to germinate it is allowing the pollen grains of different flowers but of the same species uh, because there the genes change and hence it is helping in the variation of the characters it is promoting the cross pollination and avoiding the self pollination this takes place in uh, certain examples which i'll be giving is uh, potato as well as in tobacco this is about self sterility or self incompatibility moving on to the fourth type of contrivances or outbreeding devices hetero style hetero refers to different styly refers to the style so in certain plants the flowers like primula as well as in jasmine there are two different types of flowers hence we call them as dimorphic di refers to two morphic refers to morphology so the 
there are two different types of flowers that is one is the pin eye what do you mean by pin eye in this type of flower you find the style is long and the stamens are short and another type of flower they have is thrum eye which means the style is short and the stamens are long okay so let us look at the diagram to understand the definition so here you can find this is the primula the example is primula diastyle there are two different flowers one is the pin eye another is the thrum eye in pin eye you can find the style is long anthers are short that is the stamens are short the filaments are short and in the thrum eye the style is short and the uh, you know anthers are long and they are especially present facing outwards so here being both pin eye and thrum eye both being the sexual i mean bisexual flowers they cannot undergo self pollination why here when we concentrate on the spin eye the anthers are present very at the lower part of the flower whereas the style is long and it is projecting the stigma almost at the upper part of the flower so the pollen grains once they are released they cannot reach this height okay so there is no self pollination so what happens is when a pollinating agent visits this pin eye flower either to collect nectar or for pollen grains in search of food so it usually comes you know it carries the pollen grains and once again it when it visits the thrum eye those pollen grains it will you know land on the stigma and thus it is helping in achieving the cross pollination okay similarly here also when the pollinating agent it is carrying the pollen grains from the thrum eye and when it is reaching the pin eye uh, flower stigma it is achieving in the you know cross pollination now tri styly also is there that is there are three different styles where do you find this in oxalis as well as lithrum you find that is there is a long style in another flower there is a normal style and then you have this very short style and here also being bisexual flowers they cannot undergo self pollination because there is variation in the length of the styles and here the broad type of pollination is achieved it is the cross pollination okay moving on to the last type of contrivances is hercogamy hercogamy here what happens is hercos means barrier so here what is happening is there is a barrier present between the anther and the stigma there is some physical barrier that barrier may be of different types in different flowers let us look into detail about that so that barrier being a bisexual flower because of that particular physical barrier the uh, flowers cannot undergo self pollination again there is a kind of adaptation so in some flowers like cruciferae member cruciferae members like in radish cabbage and cauliflowers as well as in caryophyllaceae the stigma is far beyond the anther that is the stigma is very long and the anthers are very short there so there what happens is because of the distance the pollen grains cannot land on the stigmatic part this is uh, the distant barrier you can say then in the second example is gloriosa the anthers are extrudes now extrudes mean these anthers are facing outwards outwards of the flower and the stigma is present within the flower so as the anthers are extrudes what happens is the anthers when they are releasing the pollen grains all the pollen grains will get released outside the flower and none of the pollen grains are uh, entering on the stigma of the same flower so this is a kind of physical barrier okay due to which the self pollination will not occur and only the cross pollination occurs next is in callotropis and orchids there is another a physical barrier and we call it as pollinia that pollinia is a bag like or a sac like structure which is containing the pollen grains and this type of pollination should be brought only by the insects only the insects can help in pollination let us look into the diagram of the callotropis and here we call this callotropis is the example is uh, you call it an in kannada as yakki gida okay so 
uh, you might have seen this flower and here you can see that this is a gynostegium present. This gynostegium, what do you mean by gynostegium? Gynostegium is formed by a structure which is formed by the fusion of stigma and androsium. The stigma and androsium together, it falls, uh, uh, forms the structure called gynostegium and here in the next diagram you can easily see that there is you know the gynostegium present and this gynostegium can find and later at the there is a translator present the pollinia is present in the gynostegium translator disc is present as well as the cortical is present and then you have this bag like structures within which the pollen grains are present and this uh, pollinia is attached with a glandular adhesive disc okay the translator is adhesive in nature adhesive means what sticky in nature so when once the insect comes and lands on this gynostegium, it comes in search to collect the nectar or for the pollen grains as its food source. Basically comes and it lands on the gynostegium and when it comes it tries to tease this gynostegium in search of pollen grains and then what happens these pollinia will get attached to its limbs. How they are getting attached because that translator is very sticky in nature. And then to that, when that insect moves to another flower, by that time what happens due to the teasing and all, these pollinia walls which are there, those walls get ruptured and the, uh, pol uh, the pol pollinia, the pollen grains uh, are getting released. Okay, so those pollen grains are getting released and it is thus helping in the cross pollination. Well, this is about the outbreeding devices. Now, the very important part in this today's topic is you have to concentrate on the kinds of pollination, the different types that may be asked in the examination. Uh, xenogamy, you have to concentrate more on xenogamy because it is bringing about variation in the characteristics. And then a five mark definite question will be on outbreeding devices. You have to remember the side headings, the definitions with the examples. So that's a very important part. So the next part regarding the pollinating agents will be continued in the next class. Okay, thank you.